Hi, this is Tim and Joel. Welcome to Midwest Hunting and Outdoors by Two Dumbasses. A podcast about the outdoors, hunting, and being a steward of the land. to eliminate human scent right so so with that uh we have a variety of sprays and rubs i'm going to call rubs and uh, but the first thing we do is as you talk about uh is my clothing and uh washing your clothing right so first off first off you're you're if you're washing your clothing in a wash machine that you've done all your other laundry in you're going to have residual as a qualifier you're going to have residual scent in it so you're going to need to purge that scent it's with a method and what i do is i'll generally run one pass of it with some scent control laundry detergent and i'll be honest with you the the one i use is from scent capture and it's a laundry detergent and been very happy with it. Uh, I will qualify. I don't wash my clothes very often, but it has been it's proven pretty effective. So, uh, again, Scent Capture is not a, a sponsor of ours at this point. Um, would love to have them be a sponsor, but at this point, um, that's what I use. How about yourself? Yeah. So, just clarification, Tim. So, this is a detergent used to in a wash machine to clean your clothes. Yep. Um, liquid powder. This one's liquid. Liquid. Yep. Okay. And, and you like it because? Uh, I mean, it, it seems to work. Um, we'll talk about routines. I, I rarely today, was particularly with my routine that we'll talk here, rarely get busted. Uh, I'm almost to the point to where I'll, I'll try to defy the wind if there's a place I want to hunt. And uh, I've had reasonably good success with that. And we'll talk about that routine here in a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, I um, we were using no scent um, uh, deodorant or not deodorant, but uh, laundry detergent. soap, and uh, we're we're out of that now. And my wife has literally gone to a believe it or not commercial um, laundry soap, but they're like no no scent in it. Mm-hmm. Um, it's kind of the new new thing out there, right? Is is that uh, uh, people want kind of pure pure soap and pure this and pure that and uh so that's what we use and we've we've we're having really good luck two years into it now and have really good luck with it that's awesome yeah all right so with laundry detergent out let's kind of go through uh some of the products that that we own but maybe not necessarily use right so we have mojo mojo yeah this is uh a, a calming um a calming cream again in a not chapstick but kind of a deodorant type uh, packaging which i really like it's waxy um type product and um re- really like it has have had uh, good success with it just started using it a couple weeks ago and so how do you use that what do you Again, I use it. Um, you can use it on anything. I think you could put it on clothes or boots or whatever. But I um, go around trees around my stand when I get into it and just put a light coat of this on there. And then when I get up in my tree stand, I'll uh, put some around the, my tree stand. So you'll use this for elimination as well as masking, it sounds like. Yeah, it's kind of a combination thing. Yeah. Excellent. Yep. Okay. Yep. All right. Next, we have scent elimination, another stick. Yeah, uh, you know, so my routine is, we'll talk about my routine, but get up, take a shower, I use no scent uh, shampoo, and then, um, you know, especially with the weather being what it was last week, 75 degrees, by the time I walk a half mile to my tree stand, uh, you know, I'm sweating, so I need to use some type of deodorant, and um, I really am not uh, bought into any particular brand, but I do believe in um, using you know, the no scent, uh, type deodorants for hunters. 
Okay. After you shower. All right. Uh, so next once so we start to get to shampoos and body washes. Um, it's one of those that I own. Um, I think this one, actually, you pick it up at Walmart. I know Walmart seems to carry this. I'm sure there's other places. Um, it's a body wash and, and shampoo. We'll talk more about that about that later. Yep. Um, we've got another one. I believe, I, I don't remember where I picked this up. It's another deodorizing body soap and body wash and shampoo that I, that I use. Um, green in color. I'm always skeptical when I see things with green in nature or colored. I always start to think about their sense attributed to that. But uh, anyway, this is one I use. So from that laundry detergent uh, that I use, there's also a hair and body spray from Scent Capture. Um, I use that periodically. Um, it's just what it is. It's a uh, sprain to try to eliminate some of the human scent on your body or clothes. Okay. So this isn't a cleaning agent. It's, it's kind of like a cover up, uh, cover agent. Yep. Okay. But primarily it's for your, it's for your body contact. Hmm. Nice. Yep. Cool. So we've got another, so now we're into some additional like sprays. And, uh, again, I'm, I use a lot of different sprays. I, I can't say as I've seen success one versus another, um, but but I do use this. I use a couple other brands as well. So, but they seem to be effective. I like them because you can use them for your clothes, use them for your equipment, use them for your boots. Um, but that's that's generally how how I leverage those if I need to. Yeah, and there's a whole. A whole, a whole shelving area, right? When you go into Bass Pro or whatever around uh, No Sense. So, so, now, so now we have this well, dumbass well, formula, right? <laughs> so uh, um, with some coaching, uh, my my wife, Mrs. Dumbass, has done some research. And, uh, you know, if you, if you spray No Sense of any kind, I mean, they're... You know, how do you tell if they work or they don't work, right? right? I mean, it's you're really having a lot of faith. But uh, so in in some researches that we've we've found, um, this is a homemade no scent spray that we've been using, and you know, it's worked as well as or not worked as well as the other ones. Um, and the you know the active ingredients in this is distilled water, um, baking soda, which makes sense, right? And um, a little bit of soap and then peroxide, which also makes sense from a scent control standpoint. Um, so simple, stupid, simple stuff. I'd love to hear from uh, the audience here of what they've used or if anybody has any insight. Because if you pull these bottles and I won't, use, but and you look at any no scent bottle, there is no ingredient list on them, right? So, and you know, it's a liquid, you know, the main component of that is going to be water. Uh, but what are the active ingredients in that is, is what's interesting. But we've had good luck with this. Um, again, you can YouTube, Google this stuff and, and find a hundred different options out there. Awesome. Awesome. All right. So now from elimination perspective, you and I've kind of ventured into the, the science a little bit about human scent with ozone. The ozone zone. Yep. So we've had... We've talked about ozone for quite some time. And, uh, I mean, it's not cheap. I mean, and you've done a lot of research on ozone as far as, you know, how many, is it micrograms? Milligrams. Milligrams, milligrams? per uh, hour is the, the metric. And so what have you seen for ranges? Uh, two to three milligrams up to six to 10,000 milligrams um, per hour. Okay, and I'm sure the prices are associated to that, right? They are, um, and the, the bigger ones, let's say 10,000, 6,000 milligrams per hour, 10,000 milligrams per hour, um, really are professional cleaning units that, let's say you had a fire or uh, had bought a car with, that had smoke in it or something like that. These ozone units are used to you know, clean areas like that apartments whatnot um so that makes sense i didn't know that i do i know that now but um 
uh, you know, that makes sense how much uh, those things are putting out at one time. Now, we're not going to go completely into the downside downsides of ozone, but one of them is is uh, it's bad for rubber, right? Last, we're still learning this, right? Yeah. But um, plastic. plastic, rubber. Um, I, I'm not sure about plastic, but you know, there's going to be some long time wear and tear on your equipment if you expose it to ozone. Yeah, some accelerated deteriorations. What I've heard. Um, We'll see. So I'm being very careful of that. But uh, we've both dipped our feet into that. So why don't we talk a little bit about what what you've got? And, yeah. Uh, and let's talk about talk about the product and where you got it. Yep. So um, I purchased uh, this off Prime, uh, Amazon Prime. It's uh, Scent Slammer, which I hadn't heard of the company, but doing a little research on it, they're you know the hunting line, of course. And uh, they have other products out there um, associated to this, but um, around thirty to thirty-five dollars um, with free shipping. So that's the range I'll give you from a price standpoint. I figured Amazon, you know, Amazon, yeah. Amazon okay. Prime, and uh, so I figured for that amount of money, it, it was worth experimenting on. And uh, this is twenty milligrams per hour, I believe. And it's got a built-in battery, so I push the top button here, and uh, you know, fan comes on. I mean, it's running. I mean, it, and it, I can hear it, but it's it's relatively quiet. Pretty quiet, and you definitely, if you've been around ozone, you can smell it right away. Um, it's kind of that clean smell. They always say, "I'm lightning." You know, after a lightning strike, you, that's ozone, right? Mm -hmm. But. Um, it's supposed to, uh, the battery in this is supposed to uh, work for four to five hours. It's USB rechargeable. Uh, I just hook it up to my computer and charge it. And um, so far, so good. I use, I have started using a tub, put all my hunting equipment in there, and then I put this unit in there for until the battery goes dead and then I take it out and charge it. I've even brought this, I've got a couple hunting techs. I've got a, the Raid X hunting tent that I hunt out a lot and love it. Um, and I've brought this in there and it really does a good job. You get enough oxygen in that it's not going to hurt you because ozone can be, I don't want to say harmful, but noxious, noxious. And, uh, but you get way enough oxygen as a hunter in that small space. It's not hurting you. It's quiet enough in, in the tent, uh, to cover the little hum that it produces. And, uh, I think it does a pretty good job. Okay. So again, I would tell you that I don't think it's the answer of eliminating everything, but I have seen noticeable results in, uh, you know, the scent being removed from my clothes. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. All right. So Joel, I, I've also gone into the ozone and like you, you know, I, I've seen some improvements in my concealability. And so what I've done is I chose to go with the scent crusher tote bag pretty nice it's got a it's a roll away bag i can put a ton of gear in here um it's certainly not the cheapest option to go this was about 200 dollars off amazon it's got um, a rapid it's got a rapid uh, descenting uh, mechanism so it'll run anywhere from five to thirty five yeah five to thirty minutes and uh it's relatively quiet this puts out, I believe we looked it up, it's 500 milligrams per hour. So it's putting out a pretty good amount of ozone. It's got a tube that comes in here and descents. I've been pretty happy with it. I, it's got a 10-year warranty on the bag, so I think it's a pretty, pretty nice little piece of product. Okay, so we've just covered off on ozone. But, uh, how would you wrap up your perspective on uh, how ozone has changed your perspective on scent elimination. I, I would, I, I'm pessimistically optimistic about ozone at this stage. Now, again, keep in mind, I've had this for four weeks, been using it almost a hundred percent of the time for this hunting season. So, um, you know, I think there's a price value standpoint there. And, uh, but for $35, I'm sold at $35 at $200, $2,000, 
you know, I don't know. I'd, I'd need another year or two to yep. really buy in, you know. Um, but I do think it's, um, I think it's going to be the next level of game changer. How about uh, Mrs. Dumbass? Where's Mrs. Dumbass feel about ozone? She's not, uh, she's not aligned. <laughs> yeah, she is. Uh, uh, so far, she's like, what? You know, what? what is this? Is another gimmick gadget? Um, but um, I'm confident. Give her, okay. give her a little time. Okay. Probably another hunting season, to be honest with you. All right. Yeah. All right. With, you, what? Do, give me, give me your opinion. Let's uh, put uh, ozone to bed. So I, I've been skeptical of ozone. I, I did not want to believe it because I did not want to invest in it. And uh, I would say uh, we did an episode with Ty Duncan, and Ty. And I was probably on the fence before talking to Ty Duncan on, on Duncan Taxidermy. And he said it, it was an absolute game changer for him. So that kind of tipped me off of the fence a little bit. And so I decided it's a lot of money, but I'm going to invest. And that's the $200. So I went in, and I can't tell you how many times I've had it in my cart and then taken it out. So that would tell you how much I was on the fence. But I bought it. And, uh, I think it makes a difference. I think it's a game changer. Like I said, I haven't been winded at all this year. So something's working in my routine. So we'll talk that a little bit more. Yeah. Good. Good. Well, more to come on that. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll keep giving our audience updates on, uh, where we're at with ozone. And for me, I can guarantee it's going to take me another season to really get a good feel for it. Okay. Yeah. So lastly, as part of our, um, again, part of our categories and how we think about scent control, the next category is attractants. Right, so the first one was masking. The next one was elimination. The next thing is, is attractants. So attractants kind of by their very nature, um, have a masking effect of our scent. And that's why we decided to include it. Even though, I mean, it's not truly scent control. It is it is about attracting attracting in the animals and covering some of your scent. So let's talk about some of those products, Joel. Okay. And you've really been the leader on this, to be honest with you. I, I would say, hey, I, I've not really been outwardly uh, targeting this, but the products I have is stuff that we've shared together and, that's what I have. But let's first start with what you have in your hand. Okay. I use um, a lot of a lot of Tinks um, products and um, not a sponsor. Not a sponsor. Again, open open <laughs> to uh, sponsorship. Uh, like their products. I th- again, I think it's a good value. I've had some results, um, good results with it from attracting deer. Um, and it's and it's readily available. So uh, this is Tinks. It's not Tink sixty nine, but it's uh, you know Dopey basically. And um, I, I ran out. That's why this is still in the package because I asked uh, Mrs. Dumbass to pick me up some a uh, uh, couple of days ago. Nice. Yeah. 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 All right. So that covers our kind of our Dopey Doestrus. Uh, next one's our uh, Buck Lure. So that's the one. Uh, yep. How about we put uh, the whole smoky lineup? Yeah, let's do that. Well, you know what? We should just probably put all of them up there. So we, because we've got, because we have some pre orbitals. So let's, well, let's just talk, talk about the smoky line and then I'll add these in here. Okay. Uh, so uh, we, I was listening to a podcast uh, when I'm retired now, but was working and I was driving. And when I drove, especially upcoming hunting season, it was podcasts about hunting and. I heard an advertisement of using uh, Smokies pre-orbitable um, hunting attractant, and I had never heard of the Smokies, and I had never heard of pre-orbital uh, glands and uh, oils used as an deer attractant. So we talked, and we ordered some, and and tried it, and I, th- you know, I would say I've had some success with it. I know you've used it a little bit, Tim. What would, how do you use it? So I, I've tried it on, you know, like a rope, hanging a rope, you know, kind of trying to emulate a, like a grapevine or something like that. 
I've not had very good luck there. Uh, and But I've been kind of evolving some of my thoughts on that. And so what I've been doing now is using it on my decoys. And so on my deer decoy. And so I'll use it in its pre-orbital. And then uh, for the the buck lure, I'll put it in the, the rut and buck. I will put it actually on the hind end of the decoy. And uh, decoy is a whole nother discussion. <laughs> it, it is. But super important, maybe even more important than covering your scent is the scent that's on the decoy, right? Yep. So, um, uh, so um, you know, I, I, I can't say that I haven't had any luck with this. Um, it, it certainly is a, a smelly product. And, uh, you know, you read good things about it. Uh, I wouldn't say I'm 100% sold on this, but uh, I certainly got some great pictures of some bucks. I've used it with a rope. You mentioned a rope, wire rope, and then put this on there over a scrape, a mock scrape or a real scrape. And, uh, you know, the bucks come and rub their head on it and racks. And uh, so I've had some success with it. Excellent. Yeah. And then, um, you know, same thing, different, uh, different company is uh, three different uh, types of oils and uh, from glands from bucks um, that I've used. They're designed for scrapes and um, also for um, your, your decoys. So uh, I started using these this year and um, I, I'm intrigued enough to look at them again next year to see. Um, small bottles, didn't get to use them a lot, but um, I've, I've really seen some activity using, using these uh, three ingredients. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. Um, where else? What do we else we want to go to here? Well, you know, one thing I would share that's uh, we're, we're talking about attractants, but maybe managing the wind. And I can't take um, I can't take credit for this. I picked this up from watching um, the public, the hunting public, the hunting public. Thank you um, on TV. So they get credit for this, but. Um, I started watching the show and they would pull out a plastic Ziploc and testing the wind with them. What are they, what are they doing here? You know, and, and they ended up that they're, you know, collecting, um, milkweed, milkweed pods, and then, uh, taking out the, you know, taking out the silk. And, uh, that's when they're in their tree stand, you know, they're, you know, where's the, you know, where, which way's the wind going? And, uh, I thought, man, it's right up my alley. I don't have to pay for it. Too is, you know, it works really well. And um, like this morning, I would tell you this morning, I felt like there was zero wind out in my tree stand. But when I used this, you know, there was just a small southerly breeze pushing my my um, my, my scent behind me where I wanted it to go. So it was just reassurance that hey, I've you know I'm I've got the right wind. If a deer comes in here, I'm going to be able to shoot it, not scare it, yada, yada, yada. Um, so just a nice little tip. I'll give those guys credit for that. I really, really like it and use it a lot. Awesome. Yeah. All right. So now we're on to kind of a wrap up right now. So let's talk routines. Right? Yeah. So uh, why don't you talk about what's your routine from start to finish when you go out for a hunt? Yep. So... Um, when I'm done hunting, my, my routine starts when I'm done hunting. When I'm done hunting, I take all of my clothes, put it in this basically, let's call it Rubbermaid uh, storage basket, take my ozone generator, put it in there, put the lid on, and I don't worry about it till I go out hunting again. Um, I get up, I get up, or before I go out hunting, I uh, take a shower and I use, you know, one of the products here. Um, in the shower, shower, and then the deodorant, uh, again, the, one of the products here. And, um, then I go into, so that's in my cabin side. Then I go into the garage side where my hunting locker is at and my clothes. And I don't come back into the cabin. I try to separate that scent from me as I'm getting dressed and I get dressed as careful and as quick as I can. And, um, and, and then head out. I usually spray down with no scent and a little bit of um, uh, our uh, nose jammer here at the cabin, a little bit. And then when I get to my tree stand, up in my tree stand, I uh, usually use a little more tree 
uh, no jam, nose jammer, and uh, then I'm rock, rocked and ready to go. Okay. Yeah. You? Uh, and how's that worked for you? You know, it, it works. I would tell you that I could be better disciplined. Uh, you know, again, it's a hunting locker, but it's in a garage. You know, in the garage, I've got my tractor. I've got my ATV. I do woodworking in there. I've got gas and diesel fuel, my chainsaw, you know. Um, is there areas of opportunity? Absolutely. For, for me to improve upon. Okay. Yeah. All right. So a little bit about my routine. I, uh, I use, I use both of these. So my thinking rightly or wrongly, my thinking is, is, uh, I mean, there's all different types of labs out there making these shampoos and body washes and who's to say who's perfect. So I always start with this green one and I finish with this one. This one's clear. I think it's more natural in, a, in appearance and uh, I will wash down with both of them. So that's how I start, start my preparation. I also will then after, well, actually probably before then, I have all my gear loaded into my duffel bag with... Uh, my ozone, all the gear that I'm going to have is in there with the exception of my boots and my bow, but everything else is in ozone and I'll run it for 30 minutes. The next thing I'll do. So after I've washed myself, I'll, I'll take one of these sprays. I've got another one I want. Um, I'll take one of these sprays. Or liquids and what I will do is I will um, start to rub down my hands and face after I dress I'll take all the stuff out of my ozone I will then start to respray my hands and uh, I will spray down my boots and I will and this will be outside of my my garage I will spray down my boots in the bottom of them and um, and I will spray down my bow pretty liberally and then, so now I get to my stand. Nose jammer, please. This is something I've kind of picked up on. And as I talked about, I used to use this body wash from Nose Jammer. And again, I love their products. I'm, I'm a super fan. And, uh, but when I use their body wash, those deer honed, honed in on me. And so I've kind of learned from that and altered my behavior. And so now what I do is I just use this spray. And what I'll do is I'll pick probably three or four trees around where my stand is at so that the deer can't triangulate on me. They're smelling, smelling this on the trees. And if you read up on Nose Jammer, they say this vanilla, this product is made from vanilla that comes from trees. It's a natural product, just more condensed. And uh, I haven't been winded at all. And, and I've seen it work. And like I, I, I think I was saying earlier, I had this sprayed on a tree this morning. And this doe walked right up and I could see right where I sprayed it. And I go, there's no way she's going to smell me. I mean, she knew something was different because I was up in a stand, but she, she couldn't smell me. I had a doe and a fawn or a yearling, I guess, underneath my stand for 30 minutes and they were 10 yards from me. So I'm a believer. Yeah. I think it's a, you know, you've, you've got me convinced that that's a good approach. Um, I mean, it makes sense even if they can't smell you, if they smell where it's coming from, you know, then they can see you, right? So, mm -hmm. you know, that, that I think you're just trying to enhance both of those situations. Yeah. So, yeah, good. Good point. So it's a total chess game. Um, but that kind of wraps up our session on scent control. Again, we've got a challenge out to our listeners. And so... So let's let's just recover that uh, one more time real quick. So you're saying 30 days after the episode gets posted we'll go through all the comments and, and, and emails. Uh, recommendation emails and comments and uh, we will pick the winner of the most uh, creative or what we feel is the most uh, effective um, scent control uh, from our audience that we get sent in yeah okay. and i think that probably enters in any whether masking or elimination primarily right versus scent yeah yeah 
Yeah, sounds good. All right. All right. Look forward to hearing your comments and getting your emails. It says, until next time, be Be safe, safe, have have fun, fun, and and get get outdoors. outdoors. Thanks for listening or watching our show. We have some exciting topics and guests coming up. We ask that you subscribe to our channel on YouTube and follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. We look forward to hearing your suggestions for topics, questions, and comments. This is Two Dumbasses signing off. Until next time, be be safe, safe, have have fun, fun, and and get get outdoors. outdoors.